Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial where I will go through the DCV server installation and show you how easy it is to get going with a remote Linux workstation. DCV is a high frame rate remote desktop solution which offers GPU sharing, remote USB support, uh, smart card security, it uses the H.264 codec and adaptive low bandwidth usage, uh, instant pre and post processing and it can be deployed on either a physical machine or a virtual machine. In this case, I'm going to deploy it on a clean 8 CentOS image. And well, let's get going. Before we begin, I'd like to mention that all of the commands used in this video are available in a script found in the description below. We'll begin by opening a terminal to our server and starting by installing the group server with UI, which is the default graphical interface for CentOS, which is based on GNOME. When a graphical interface is installed, we can continue by installing some other dependencies. Continuing the installation, we run lsmod grep novu, uh, this is to see if the new driver, which is an open source media driver, is loaded. We then proceed to uh, modify our grub configuration and make sure that this driver won't be loaded at the reboot. If nothing was returned by the LS mod, you can continue with the installation like I do in this case. If you have a return, then please reboot prior to installing the video driver. Otherwise, you might receive an error. We'll push on by downloading the NVIDIA driver and make it executable. But before we run the file, we have to change the target level. We issue the command systemctl isolate multi user, which prevents and stops any services or applications from using graphics. We can then proceed to install the NVIDIA driver. When the driver installation is done, we continue by creating an XO file by running NVIDIA xconfig where we include enable all GPUs to make sure that a multi-GPU system have all GPUs enabled. Also we enable multi-monitor. This is not necessary for all systems, but this makes sure that even a system with no monitors attached will have multi-monitor support. We then insert one more line into the XOR config which disables power management for the GPU, which might result in a lower performance after a while otherwise. We can now finally start to download and install the DCV packages. When the installation is done, we set the default target level to graphical and the current target level to graphical. We then issue the command DCV GL admin enable, which enables GPU sharing. We continue by granting access for the DCV user to the X server and also check that this is working properly and that local users can access the X server. We then issue a glx info command to see that our OpenGL is installed properly. It will also show that our NVIDIA driver is properly installed. We'll now verify that DCV is working by running the command DCV GL diag which will test the CV itself, permissions, and check that 3D rendering is working. We'll finish up by doing some minor modifications. We'll start by um, opening the firewall ports, 8443, both UDP and TCP. TCP is when you use HTTPS and UDP if you use the quick protocol. We'll then append some modification to our pool kit to uh, make sure that there are no annoying pop-ups regarding color profile or update repositories when connecting from remote. Last, we modify the DCV configuration by changing the target FPS and adding uh, support for the quick protocol. We enable auto start on the uh, DCV server service and uh, reboot the system. Once connected back, we start by checking the status of the DCV server service. As it's running fine, we can finally try the software out. 
We we'll start by doing DCV create session using an option storage route pointed to home and ending with an ID for the session which is an identifier. With our session up and running, we can now finally connect. Type your host name or IP address to your server and mind the connection settings if you want to change the protocol to quick. In the upper left corner, you can see a cloud with arrows pointing up and down. This is available when you use the storage root option, which then allows you to upload and download files to the directory specified. This can also be set in the DCV configuration file for a permanent setting. You also have a cog wheel in the upper left corner, which shows you the current display resolution, streaming mode, where you can change between quality and responsiveness. You can see the bandwidth, usage, latency, and also the current frame rate. This V is very smart and only sends the required frames. So when I'm not doing anything, the frame rate stays low. And when I'm starting GLX gear, you can see that the frame rate increases. Thank you everyone for watching. I'd like to mention again, there is a link in the description with all the commands used in this video. Enjoy this V and cheers.